the jail booth became a confessional full of admitted sins, forgiveness, and answered prayers. In the midst of his ramblings about how and why he could do better, I heard myself mumble, brother, we need you. Here we go, y'all. Hey, man, it's the Black Man Lab After Flow. We in Albany, Georgia. We rocking with the brothers. We're at Albany Technical College. It's a beautiful thing, man. We just coming out of a Black Man Lab here in Albany, Georgia, and it's just number love. Um, man, we excited. You know, we on this tour. Uh, fourth City, four. Fourth City. And number love, number love, young brothers, more seasoned brothers, elders. Uh, we had a we had a, a conversation, a conversation full of of love and authenticity. That's right. And so we give thanks in Albany, Georgia. In Albany, Georgia. One yeah, of yeah. The, one of the major stops on the Underground Railroad moving south. Talk about that real quick. Well, you know, black folks who wanted their freedom. Uh, and took their mat took matters in their own hand, got to Albany, and that was one of the last stops to get them to the Seminole Nation. They made it to the Seminole Nation. They could taste the birth of freedom. As Frederick Douglass said, they started praying with their feet. With their feet. With their feet. <laughs> All right. Um, man, we here with some brothers. Um, introduce yourselves. Tell them, you know, who you are, what, what, you, what you represent. Well, maybe not what you represent, now that I know. <laughs> now nah, you go ahead. You tell them all your, tell them all of your affiliations. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, my name is William Harrell. I am the Academic Achievement Coach here at Auburn Technical College. I'm a part of the Teams Project, where our ambition is to make sure every African-American male on campus has a fundamentally opportunity to succeed. Mm. And I'm also a member of the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Look, look, uh, Keith was slow. Yeah, that was look, too look. slow. No, Keith was slow on the thing because he's a member of another organization, <laughs> Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity <laughs> Incorporated. So I had to give him his props, and then yeah. we got an alpha. No, 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 don't do that. I, I, so we've got a cap over here, and I just love it. my children. Get to squabbling <laughs> with each other. Oh, <laughs> hey, look, 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 look. We we not we're not doing that, but it's interesting. Your sole focus is on African American male achievement. Absolutely. Academic achievement. Absolutely. We want to make sure that while the men are here, mm. they have the every opportunity to succeed and get their higher education. Whatever challenges that they face, whether it's internal or external, we are here to help them with that. Mm. That's strong. And uh, we That's do a have, ministry. Yes, mm. it is. Because a lot of African-American males, they do start college, but a lot of them don't finish. And so we are here to make sure that they start, they're finished. And we are here. Tell us about the president. Oh, he came in. He yes. he provided us greetings today. Yeah. That was that was beautiful. You know, we we oh. came and the president of the university was like, "I'm going to do a welcome for y'all," and he was a brother, yes. right? And so he was like, "You know, that was genius." Love yeah, it. Dr. Emmett Griswold. He's our new president. He's an awesome gen gentleman. He's a graduate of, all of Albany State University, just like I am. Mm. So hey, we are in good hands here at Albany Technical College. Oh wow! Albany State representing strong tonight. Strong, yes. strong. Yes. Lots of students from Albany State, which is uh, the largest HBCU in the state right now. Wow. That is correct. The Golden Rams. The Rams. The Golden Rams. The Golden Rams. That's right. Golden Rams. And may I quickly add that all the four Vela Wildcats that are out there prepared to get defeated. By the Golden Rams. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's, it's going, uh, it's going down. Look, you went four Valley State. Look at Oh that. my goodness. <laughs> Y'all, the the our producer man, bro, Keith is he's getting hit both ways, man. Okay, I'm staying out of that. <laughs> Look, I just came back from FAMU's homecoming. It was it was different, um, so I'm I'm just lucky to be here because yeah, yeah. they they were trying to have me stay there and not get up, but I'm here. Right. We made a trip, um, Pastor. Um, introduce yourself. We, we we appreciate you, Rev. Yes, sir. Well, my name is Pastor Yaz. I am the pastor of Walk by Faith Ministries here in Albany, Georgia. Uh, also a community leader, um, as well as the um, the host of Let's Talk Radio Show right here in Albany, Georgia. Um, when I say 
talking about black men, of course, we have had a lot of um, discussion, which was needed, a lot of release that that was needed. Yes, sir. And it actually represents, it represents even, you know, my walk in the ministry as it relates to my community. I was born and bred here, mm. and I, I do a lot in the community, um, and, and even going back further than that, my father did a lot in the community um, as well. Yes, sir. Um, when you was talking about the things that was happening here in Albany, Georgia, by the black leaders, uh, it was my father that uh, made all that possible. Mm. And that's why today um, the city has three buildings named after my dad. Who say is his name. Johnny Johnson Jr. Johnny yeah. uh, Johnson Jr. Let's say his name. Yeah. That's what we had and, to uh, do. And and his, his um, uh, the bloodline is it's just, it's just in my blood to want, they want yes, better sir. for, yes, sir. for the community. And I appreciate you all. I appreciate the divine intervention uh, that 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 phone call just we to, communi communicated and and just just made it made it happen. Y'all, I want to make it clear how this whole thing worked. We just made a phone call and Rev was like, "Oh yeah, um, all right, hold on, I, you building? Yes, caterer? Yes, DJ? Yes, it's done. Just get here, and here we are. And so we appreciate you being the brother that helped facilitate." this gathering of Black Man Lab, and we look forward to continue to build with Absolutely. you. So, Absolutely. So thank you. Absolutely. All right, we got our youngest in charge. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Tell, introduce yourself. <clears throat> well, I'm Zaquan Robinson. Zaquan. Yeah, I'm from Florida. All right, what part? Jacksonville. All right, Jacksonville. Go ahead, give us more. I go to Lee County High School. Uh, yeah, I'm here to... Uh, to contribute what I know and to give information to other people so that we can put our knowledge together. And there it is. That's what it's and about. build together. We appreciate yeah. it, brother. How old are you? I'm 17. 17 years young, boy. Yeah, and then you you're at the at the younger end of this. Um the chairman of the New Georgia Project, the Reverend Attorney Brother and Friend, Francis glad, Johnson. Glad to be in the lab tonight. Yeah, it was a beautiful thing. You drove over from Statesboro, Georgia. I did. Um what what did you experience? What do you, what do you what did you see tonight? that was maybe a little different from the other Black Man Lab experiences that we had in Statesboro, Macon, and um, uh, Statesboro, Macon, as well as Columbus. What, what was different about tonight? And hold your mic up a little bit. So sure. Well, I think tonight the brothers came prepared to talk about um, some very emotional uh, sides of Black manhood. Yes. And so lots of talk about release, Lots of talk about shame and anger. Lots of talking about how to turn those emotions into a drive to see change. And so it's always a part of the Black Man Lab, but tonight just felt like the brothers came ready. They dropped the pretense. Mm. They pulled back the mask. You know, Paul Lawrence Dunbar says, we wear, wear the, the mask. mask. No doubt. But the brothers let those masks down. And I think because uh, the convener, because of this space, because of the president, because of your role. Uh, I think in every relationship, we ask the question, can I trust you? Mm -hmm. And I think the brothers were able to check that off quick and then move on to the work. Yeah, we got right to it. We mm -hmm. got right to it. Yeah. Brothers, um, we wanna know, right? And, and this tour we're very clear about is black men got something to say, right? And, and what do we want to say to the world? What are brothers in Albany, Georgia at this moment in 2022, as we are on the cusp of a significant election? What do we want to say? What, what's on our minds? What are the things that are important that resonate uh, for us as black men, um, for you all here in Albany, Georgia? Um, you can start with us. Okay. Well, in Albany, the African-American males in this city want to be heard. And this election is an opportunity for Southwest Georgia, along with African-American men, 
to be heard. Mm. Uh, the current administration here in the state has not catered their business toward the African-American community or Southwest Georgia. Mm. I think the candidate on the Democratic side is aware of what's going on down here. And I think she has a plan to include African-American males and everybody in Southwest Georgia. Mm. All right. So yeah. maybe, maybe the best man for the job is a woman. Absolutely. I, the 84th it. governor of Georgia. Think about that. I mean, you think this is this is a pretty radical moment we we live in, that we have an African-American female running for governor of Georgia, be the first African-American female governor of any state Correct. in the union. And back to the, the moment James Oglethorpe crossed the Savannah River from Savannah, uh, from from South Carolina into what would later be known as Savannah, Yamacraw Bluff, mm -hmm. to now have and, and remember James Oglethorpe didn't want black people in, the, in this state, correct? And uh, lots of folks spinning and say he was against slavery. He was no, against no. black people. Right, right. Uh, it wasn't anti-slavery. It was no, anti-black. Anti-black, exactly. Right, right. And so to think about that, to think about the other marquee race mm -hmm. that in a seat held by Eugene Talmadge. I mean, the mm -hmm. segregationists of segregationists. Uh, Richard B. Russell, that mm -hmm. that a black man is going to be elected to the Senate from Georgia. There's only been 11 African Americans in the history of this country, and one of them sits in that seat now, Raphael Warnock, of course, who previously chaired the New Georgia Project. Correct. Uh, but whatever you think about Herschel Walker or Raphael Warnock, you take your pick about the person who can best represent you in the Senate, but there are two black candidates running. That's amazing. Oh, that's unheard. That that's it's story. unheard of. It's unheard of. It's unheard well, of. well, Chicago, uh, Illinois, you had Barack Obama running against Alan Keyes uh, for that for that Senate race. It was two black men running in that race. And, of course, Barack Obama won, and the rest is history. But uh, this is singular in terms of the South. Rev, you know, what, what do you what do you like? What do you want um, folks to hear? I, I, you know, actually, um, as I was listening to you all, one of the things that's kept resonating in my mind is to um, how do we get the black man, the black men, mm -hmm. you know, excited about even voting to make a difference? Mm. Because you have you have a lot of stipulations that runs against us. You have a lot of uh, excuses as like my vote don't count, mm -hmm. or you have a lot of my um, vote don't count. Don't my count. voice is not heard. Absolutely, that's why we're doing the tour. Absolutely, because black men got something to got say. Got something to say. This, this, Cut the myth that black men don't want to support a black woman in leadership. Man. Right. Know, we want to right. dismiss that so, myth. So all, and all that is a myth. Are, all, all of those yes, are lies. Right. Exactly. Because, because black, black men are voting. Yes. And they're voting at record numbers. As a matter of fact, uh, black men, uh, their, their vote participation is only second to the black woman. And they're trending at this point where we are in an early election, surpassed 2018, uh, and are knocking at 2020 numbers. That's a presidential turnout number. And so what we need to say is the truth, and that is black men are showing up and they're showing out, at least in the early vote tolls. Yeah, when we, when we look at, when we look at diff, different uh, uh, geographic, different cities, yeah. um, uh, uh, your, your city may be different from our city, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not an over, a overall you know, um, rating as it relates to black men vote, because here, here in, in this area, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the numbers, the black women out, outweigh the uh, the black men as it relates to voting. Right. So we're talking about Albany, Albany, Georgia. Yes, yes. And then when we look at um, um, as a, as a whole, we're looking at how do we keep our our black men off of the out of the system that prevents them from voting. Correct. And for those who are um, out of the system, how do we create more programs to keep, uh, keep them out? There of you the go. So there you go. Interesting. Um, Rev, the work that you do in terms of you talked a lot during the Black Man Lab about anger mm -hmm. and and how we address that anger and and move forward in a positive direction. Right. And so um, we always talk about habits, rituals and disciplines to kind of close out. And, and I want each of you all, and especially you, young man, you, you're 17 years old. Um, I just, you know, everybody in the room, when you said 17, everybody's like, oh, like, man, I wish, 
You know, yeah, right, I, right, I remember, right, right, right. I remember when I was 17, <laughs> right? That's a sweet age, man. It's a beautiful age. I know it has its challenges, but the whole world of front in front of you, what are you doing on a daily basis so that you can prepare yourself for the future? What are some of your habits, rituals, and disciplines? And then we're going to go around the clock and then we're going to be out of time for this segment. So you get us kicked off. What I do is... I really try to focus on myself and get through school first because that's really the toughest thing to get through right now. So I understand. You pray in the morning? Yes, sir. Any any physical exercises that you do in the morning? Uh, No, but I have weight training at school. Okay, so weight training. Because yeah. it's been shown that when you do physical exercise that it, it, it heightens your sense of connecting with subjects and subject matters and, and your grades go up, so. Do about fifty push-ups every morning. And then never, that's real. Do fifty push-ups. I might need to try that. I'm telling you. All right, all right. We gonna keep moving. Um, tell us what 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 do you what do you do? What have you done? What have been your habits, rituals, and disciplines that have moved you um, on the trajectory that you're on now that you're literally in service to black men? Exactly. Well, one of the sayings that I've, I've indoctrinated. Starve your distractions, feed your focus. Starve so, your distractions, feed, feed your, your focus. focus. That's rich. We can get one for that. Yeah, yeah. There so is. I try, on a daily basis, I try to do that. And I also I try to do that with the students that I encounter. You know, there's a lot of distractions in college. Right. And it's, it's a lot of rituals that get you off the path. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, don't feed those distractions. Don't engage them, but literally starve them. Starve. Neglect them. Get them out of your mind. And feed that focus that drives you, that focus that got you in school in the beginning. Feed it, and you'll be all right. All right. All right. That's what's up. That's Rev, what's up. I like that. Lean into that mic and I tell us. I, I like that. What, what do you, what, I, like I, that. I, I know, obviously, you praying every morning. Every morning. Every morning. I, 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 I pray and I meditate. Meditate. And, Talk and about I, your meditation. You know, I, you know I, the, the, the very first thing I do, I sit up and I sit on the corner the, on the corner of my bed and mm -hmm. I say my prayers and I, I meditate. And in my meditation, I'm, I'm, I'm being thankful, being grateful. And I look at my 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 day ahead and I'm praying and asking God to give me the, the focus and give me the strength to keep me from being uh, distracted. And I also, in the midst of all of that, I think about the things that once had me bound. And I keep, mm. one, of my, one of my words I always mm. tell myself is that I never be bound again. Yes, sir. I never be bound again. And mm. one, I keep saying it to myself and those things, of course, the more you say it, you know, the, the devil gonna attack you. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna come and try to use those, those, those little subtle ways to get you back where you were. But I keep telling myself I never, I tell myself every day throughout the day that I never be bound again. I never be bound again. And just those words alone help increase me, help motivates me. Um, it helps. It helps me to even more so deal with others. It helps me to deal with with uh, 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 the 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 anger that tries to bestow me. You know. You know. Uh, Jesus himself got angry, but he sinned not. So mm -hmm. there's there's nothing wrong with being angry, but don't sin in your anger. Do something that is going to make your city be, get mad enough to do something that's going to make your situation better. Mm -hmm. Get mad enough yeah. to do something to yeah. make your situation yeah, Alan, better. Alan yeah. Bozak who was the contemporary of Desmond Tutu and was the more radical of the preachers in South Africa, says this about hope in, the, in, the, in, his, in his writings on the audacity of hope, says that hope has two daughters and one is anger and, uh, and the other is courage. And so you have to be angry about the things that uh, you can no longer tolerate and you have to have the courage to change them. And so, uh, you know, anger is, you, the, James Baldwin said it best to be to be conscious in this country, uh, the land that is so plenteous that we helped to make right. as great as it is, and to get so little, uh, we may uh, we will certainly pay for all we get. We won't get all we paid for. That's right. That should make you angry, That's right. but it should have make you also have the courage to go out and change it to make it what it ought to be. So I, I appreciate 
to talk on anger tonight. Yeah. Pastor, I'm going to show up in your church one day. <laughs> <laughs> one day. Well, brothers, we appreciate you all. We appreciate mm -hmm. being in this space. Mm -hmm. You all Absolutely. welcoming us and mm -hmm. for us to have this experience. So thank y'all for the first session yeah. Yeah. of the Black Man Lab <laughs> After Flow. Albany, Georgia, baby. Albany! Woo-hoo! Uh -huh. <laughs>